What is up, YouTube hey family? Guys. Thank you guys for tuning back into Wilburn Shenanigans, where we always bring the shenanigans on this channel. If you are new, make sure you guys smash that subscribe button, help us reach our goal of hitting 100k this year. Also, like, comment, and run every number up there is to be ran up on this channel. So, we got a lot of feedback on the NASCAR crashes last time. Um, it was our first time like watching some stuff like that, and there was a lot of people saying, like, you think that's something? Go to Formula One. And I am familiar with the Formula One car, like, at least What's what it looks like. So I can only imagine because aren't their heads like outside of the car? Like, what's the what's the one that um that you and Ryland watch um on YouTube where it's just like the two lane, but they crash a lot too? Oh, this those look like quarter miles and they just straight race. Oh, those. Like those. A quarter mile I um we just found out that they're doing it in our town now, so I think. I'm well, we have a racetrack here. I don't yeah. know if you guys are familiar with Bakersfield. We have the Formosa. I know a lot of the guys come here like from local towns around us, like L.A. for sure. Come here and race here. I know other cars, but if you are but like familiar, our we do son, have a big track here. That yeah, our son literally will be on YouTube all day and watch those. What is it? Called? The quarter mile. The quarter mile races. So like, he'll him and Todd they'll like bet like what car's gonna take it, and he even does the the diesels. I didn't even know diesels race. It's crazy. It's and exciting. we were just shook it. I was like, what? Yeah, but uh, the Famosa track here is very popular. If we haven't went. I haven't been to it. We drive by it all the time because it's a lake. Me and my dad go fishing it. That's right there. So I see it all the time. But I would love to go see that. But. Let's dive into this one. I'm a little nervous on this one because, I, like I said, their bodies are outside of this one. Nervous. Their bodies are outside? What do you mean? Like, their little bodies are, like, up here. You see little Oh, heads. those. And the roll hook and the so halo very them? much doing its job before the yeah, car digs in. And car you do not ever want to see accidents like that. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we're looking at the 10 worst crashes in F1 history. Big fire there as they exited out. Turn That's three, insane. and that looks very nasty indeed. And unsurprisingly, that is a red flag. For this list, we're looking at the most devastating crashes to take place in F1. Sadly, because some of these crashes resulted in deaths, a content warning is now in effect. Which of these crashes had you covering your eyes? Be sure to let us know in the comments. Lorenzo Bandini at the 1967 Monaco Grand Prix. Sure at the 1967 Monaco Grand Prix, Lorenzo Bandini was trailing in second place behind Denny Holm when he lost control of the vehicle and crashed. Now Bandini. Now Bandini's crashed. Wait, where did he even come from? Look at that. Uh, Wait, the go car, back. Go back. It looks like it's happened upside too down. Fast. You can't go see it. The car it's like they, they probably skipped this in second scene because they don't behind Denny oh, yeah, Holm yeah, okay, when he lost right control there. of the vehicle and crashed. Now Bandini. Yeah, yeah they probably skipped this thing on YouTube. Yeah, look at that. That's, that's the car, crazy. it looks like it's, it's upside down, right? Phil. The car flipped and its fuel tank broke, which resulted in the car bursting into flames. Wow. Marshall struggled with rescuing Bandini as the flames constantly grew and made the task all the more difficult. Although Bandini was eventually pulled out of the vehicle, he had still sustained third degree burns. He was taken to the hospital, but sadly, he passed away three days later. Wow. Was he was 31 he years of age. 31? Gilles Villeneuve the 1982 Belgian Grand Prix. Near the end of the qualifier session of this edition of the Belgian Grand Prix, Gilles Villeneuve aimed to improve his position and lap time, so he attempted to cut another racer. There was clearly confusion as to which side he should complete the maneuver. He went right and hit the vehicle he attempted to pass. Villeneuve's car flipped several times, and the subsequent impact was so devastating it resulted in Villeneuve being launched out of the vehicle. Oh my goodness. He was rushed to the hospital, but hours later it was announced that he had passed away. Jules Bianchi, the 2014 Japanese Grand Prix. In F1 races, one crash often leads to another, but none have been under such unusual circumstances. During a lap of this race, as a result of weather conditions, Sauber's Adrian Sutil would go off the track and hit a wall. Okay. A crane was used by marshals to remove the vehicle. During what? the removal process, Marusha's Jules Bianchi wound up driving directly oh, into the crane. He was unconscious How? and was subsequently placed in intensive care. He later passed away as a result of the head injuries he sustained during the accident. He will be much missed in the Formula One paddock. Ronnie there. Peterson, oh the 1978 Italian Grand Prix. Crashing the vehicle he was meant to drive at the race during a practice session, Team Lotus's Ronnie Peterson was forced to drive an older model instead. Along with his vehicle facing technical difficulties, the main race began as the flag was dropped before all the cars were in their respective positions. The ensuing havoc and confusion caused by the error resulted in Peterson's vehicle colliding with a McLaren driven by James Hunt. <laughs> P2 
Peterson's Lotus would then hit a barrier and burst into flames. Hunt and several crew members were able to get Peterson out of the vehicle and he was rushed to the hospital. The next morning, Peterson was pronounced dead as a result of a fat embolism. So we went from NASCAR like, survival Bougeon. to like all these, all these are dead. fatal. But these cars, like I said, look how they, they are out, like little heads. And I'm thinking, so I'm looking at this. I noticed some of you guys helped me with the NASCAR when I asked about the road cage and how the body stays down because it's so light. So I'm looking right here. It looks like they have like a little cage kind of around them. But I'm thinking because mm. these cars are so compact. I mean, there's only so much yeah. you can be protected in there. The 2020 Bahrain Grand Prix. During you the first lap of this race, Romain Grosjean's vehicle clipped Daniel Kvyat's Alfa Tori's left front wheel. Grosjean's car was sent reeling and crashed into a metal barrier. It was sliced in half and caught on fire. That's extraordinary. Yeah. It's just the but car like has gone through, through the... Do you know like how probably haunting that is to know that like... I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not on purpose, but like that your car caused this. Oh yeah, I'm pretty like, sure Like he it's... lived and he controlled his and then you see yours, the other person just going to die. Like, I feel like, I feel, I feel like... I feel like it's like they hold that. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I mean, and then too, like they know what they're doing, like what it comes with. But at the same time, still, you got to live with that. Like, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Like you. Yeah. That's barrier. You see, the car's gone like, through yeah. the barrier. Despite all odds, Grosjean was able to remove his race boot, escape the vehicle and ultimately save himself. Wow. Surprisingly, he left relatively unscathed, Finally, no having death. only suffered minor burns and spraining his left ankle. Like, having only been right inside here. the yeah. vehicle well, a mere 28 Whoa. seconds like... after the crash had occurred, it is truly a miracle that he survived and was able to escape an almost certain fate. I thought about my kids and I said, no, I cannot die today. Alberto Ascari. Oh, are there suits? Uh, fireproof? Mm -hmm. hmm. so the 1955 hands? Monaco Grand Prix. Yeah, Trailing behind ones. Sterling Moss in this race for the like lead, Alberto Ascari was in luck when the engine of Moss's Mercedes broke down. Like the opportunity to take the lead, however, was missed as Ascari's vehicle swerved out of control, crashed through a barrier and directly into the Mediterranean Sea. Ascari has overshot the chicane. The car has somersaulted straight into the harbor. The car sank, but fans breathed a sigh of relief when Ascari appeared on the surface. He was subsequently rescued and hauled out of the water. A motor launch has picked Ascari up, and he is brought over to the harbor side where an ambulance is waiting. Despite the harsh nature of the crash, Ascari came out of the whole ordeal with a broken nose wow. and some bruises. Ooh, Wolfgang nose. von Trips, the 1961 Italian so Grand Prix. Gosh. On the second lap of the Italian Grand Prix race in 1961, two cars on the track came in contact with one another. While one of the cars, driven by Jim Clark, came to a halt, the other, driven by Wolfgang von Trips, was spinning out of control and struck a section of spectators. Oh, that is spectators. I was wondering, I was von like, Trips dang, is that a... was thrown out of the vehicle and did not survive the accident. Despite this horrific sequence of events, the race continued and von Tripp's teammate, Phil Hill, went on to win the race. Some drivers only became aware of the crash and its severity after the race, leaving many oh, so to question know. why wow, it had not been did. stopped. Niki Lauda, the 1976 German Grand Prix. One of the greatest and biggest stars to ever get behind the wheel. This Austrian legend was involved in one of the most horrific accidents in F1 history. During the second lap of the race, out of nowhere, Lauda's car swerved out of control and caught on fire. Several drivers and staff assisted in pulling Lauda out of the vehicle, oh, but despite escaping, he received severe burns all over. And the initial prognosis was that he had little chance of survival. The nature of his injuries was such that a priest was called to administer the last rites. Even though he wow. was in critical condition and went into a coma, Lauda remarkably survived the ordeal and would make an incredible comeback after six weeks. And what? he later went on to win two more world titles. You're going back? Ronnie they Ratzenberger, I mean, the 1994... Died, a lot of people. I mean, it's, it's anything. Like, I there's, know. there's people who, that football player, Hamlin, he's I still know, like, but like... It's their passion and I know, You're not going to let it go. I know, but... You're not going to let it go. I know. No, but like you literally if you got in a car accident you're gonna get in the car and drive the next i know but san marino grand prix at the conclusion of this afternoon's final qualifying session for tomorrow's san marino grand prix i sadly have to report that the news is bad during a qualifying session of the san marino grand prix in 1994 the nose wing of this 31 year old's vehicle had gotten detached 
The car subsequently went off the track and slammed directly into a barrier. Ratzenberger had suffered a skull fracture so severe, he was pronounced dead shortly after medical staff arrived at the site of the crash. It was the first time that we have to face a dead Formula One driver for what are the our generation. I don't know, I can't even tell you. The whole atmosphere was very heavy that afternoon, you know, and everybody was thinking about what, what are we doing here, or what's the point, you know. Worst of all, many believe the tragedy could have been prevented, as Ratzenberger was aware of the issue with his vehicle, but opted to complete another lap instead. Unfortunately, oh, wow. this wouldn't be the last tragedy to take place at the 1994 Grand Prix in San Marino. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Ayrton Senna, the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix. Alex Senna, my goodness! On lap seven of the main race, Brazilian and three-time champ Ayrton Senna had taken a comfortable lead over Benetton's Michael Schumacher. At one point coming up on the corner, he attempted to make a turn, only for his vehicle to skid off the track and crash into a wall. The accident was it's so devastating, the car's okay. front oh, wheel and nose yeah. were torn but off. Ayrton like, attempted to make a like turn, only, only for his vehicle leg. to skid off like, the track and looking. crash it's into a wall. Tiny... The accident was so devastating, the car's front wheel and nose were torn off. Ayrton ran out of luck. He did not have a broken bone in his body. He did not have any bruising. Yeah, he was still in, intact in the car. The if little, that the little piece of that. assembly would have gone six inches higher or six inches lower, he would have walked back to the paddock. Although he was pulled out of the vehicle, he was in critical condition. And despite receiving medical treatment, it was to no avail. And he passed away later what? that evening. He was Why? special. I mean, he was not one step. He was two steps this better than everyone else. Did you enjoy this video? Impact, like, Check out these. Family. That's crazy. I knew these were going to be more than a NASCAR because, like I said, the cars they're in is way different than... I don't know. I, it's so hard to watch stuff like this because, like, I get it. Um, I feel like every sport has its pros and cons. I mean, the racing with the motorcycles, that right there, you know, like, any sport, um, because it has its pros and cons, but it's just... I like, when uh, you can't go through that and still go back... That is mind blowing. I always like the movie Ford First Ferrari. You guys know if you ever see me with my Ford hat, I know a lot of guys come here and be like, Ford suck, blah, blah, blah. I'm not a Ford all the way across the board fan. I'm a Mustang guy and I like the Fox bodies. And um, when I watched Ford First Ferrari, watching that movie and seeing the drive that he had and him trying to build the GT, the Ford GT, and make it perfected, and then he died doing that. It's just a passion. It's a passion for something. Like, some, you just have that drive and that love for what you do. They got to play and in park. When people are willing to, when people are willing to, if they, they're going to, if that's going to happen, they're, yeah. they're happy. Like, hey, I die doing what I love. Yeah, uh, I exactly. Saying, I understand you that. You know, that um, scene. so there's these guys right here who are committed to racing and we watch it and we say, yeah, man, oh my God, I can, but it's like, these guys are committed to what they love doing and they know it's dangerous, but it's sad. They, see, they're committed I to what they I think what they gets it, I, what gets me is the fact that like, they have the footage and I'm pretty sure, like, to us, the footage looks horrible. But imagine being there that day. Oh, like, yeah. I'm pretty sure it looks way worse. So I think if, like, if I, well, of course, I feel like the footage is just, it's just sinking my stomach. It's just, yeah. oh. This one's way harder to watch than NASCAR. I mean, NASCAR, the crashes were deadly. But like I said, I know their little bodies, like, their head is kind of But maybe now, in today's um, time, I feel it's probably. Oh, technology is definitely. they got Not technology, it. but the build of the, oh, the car, car. Yeah, is probably safer or something, like, sadly. Because I'm pretty sure back then it was just starting so they didn't have the best of the best yeah, oh, whereas yeah. now i'm not saying we have the best of the best but i think it's now it's probably safer. that's probably why that guy survived or not he didn't survive but his car was still intact because yeah. that, they were getting better at building the frame yeah coming. exactly so I, still, I don't know what they look like, like now but i'm pretty sure like you said they probably are better but it's it's like i said it's crazy seeing this but i mean i understand I just, the I like commitment to what you love them you know something i don't know yeah it's, it's wild but, but this was a wild one you guys I mean, are right hey this when you love something you love something yes so. yes but thank you guys once again for tuning in with us. Thank you guys for dropping thank this off. Guys. Let us know what you thought about this one. Do you watch Formula One racing? Have you guys ever been to any of these? I just I'm just curious. I want to know. Is it expensive? Like where do you, how do you find out about stuff like this? I'm curious to know. But thank you guys so much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. See you guys in the next one.